Okay, so dementia. Dementia is, the definition of dementia that I'm using is a progressive failure of cerebral functions that's not caused by a decreased level of consciousness. So that means patients, um, that kind of rules out patients that are in a coma because patients that are in a coma are in a coma. So if they have de decreased, um, if they have a decreased level of consciousness on the Glasgow Coma Scale, then they um, do not necessarily have dementia. Okay, and it's progressive, meaning that it continues to get worse, and it's a chronic condition. So this is not a acute condition or a transient condition, so it's very different than delirium. All right, so I wanted to talk about different classifications. Um, one classification is um, the uh, classification by area of the brain. So here we have the cortex, and then we have a whole bunch of things below the cortex. So this um, cerebellum, and the thalamus, and the midbrain, pons and medulla, and the brainstem. Okay, so <clears throat> one type of dementia is um, cortical dementia. So that's anything that, that's dementia that comes from the cortex. And really there's two major forms, Alzheimer's disease and Pick's disease. Now Alzheimer's is very common, Pick's disease is not quite as common. Then there are the subcortical dementias. So subcortical anything from below the cortex. And the two major types that we think about here are Parkinson's dementia and Huntington's disease. And again, um, Parkinson's is much more common than Huntington's. Huntington's is a genetic condition that um, that is um, something that you're born with, but the disease doesn't manifest until later in life, and we're not going to really talk about it significantly in this session. Although, uh, you know, if someone uh, happens to write about it on the blog, that would be excellent. And then there is a third class of dementias that include, that are both cortical and subcortical, so sort of a mixed so dementias that involve the cortex and the uh, midbrain um, are fairly rare. For instance, Creutzfeldt-Jakob uh, disease, which I don't think there's ever been a case in the United States. There were a few, maybe a half dozen cases in, uh, in, in England, and it's a fascinating disease, but we're not going to talk about it significantly. And then other infections, most of them viral. Okay, now for this talk, that's the general classifications. For this talk, we are going to focus on Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's dementia. Okay. Okay, so first we are going to talk about Alzheimer's disease. Now, interestingly enough, I want to start out by saying that um, we do not know the pathophysiology of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, the jury is still out about what the cause of Alzheimer's disease are. But I'm going to talk about three theories, okay? And all of these theories are sort of de um, were developed based on correlations that we notice, things that um, we noticed that was different about the brains of people that had Alzheimer's disease. Now, back in the 1980s, um, we noticed that people that had Alzheimer's disease had um, deficiencies, had decreased amounts of acetylcholine in the cortex. And the theory that was proposed was that it was this deficit of acetylcholine that, uh, that caused the later damage, that later caused damage to the neurons and uh, brain atrophy. Okay, and so this led to the development of lots of new new medications. They were um, medications that um, they were acetyl cholinesterase inhibitors, and these medications were very effective. 
at increasing the amount of acetylcholine in the body because remember acetylcholinesterase is the chemical that breaks down um, acetylcholine in the synapse and so remember acetylcholine is released into the synapse and then it disappears relatively quickly because of acetylcholinesterase coming it's an enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine and the acetylcholine disappears okay so if you have acetylcholinesterase inhibitors um, you're going to inhibit uh, all of these um, acetylcholinesterases and that is going to allow more of this acetylcholine to hang around and you're going to have more acetylcholine in your brain so this seemed to be very promising based on the theory but unfortunately the theory has now been called into doubt because the acetylcholinase and hysterase the acetylcholinase esterase, excuse me, acetylcholinesterase inhibitors um, work uh, only have a transient effect on people with Alzheimer's disease. And it does not, it has no change in the progression of the disease. So we've increased the um, amount of acetylcholine, acetylcholine in the brains of people that may that are starting to develop Alzheimer's disease. But no matter how much acetylcholine these people have in their brains, the disease continues to progress. They continue to have um, progression to um, fewer neurons and brain atrophy. Okay. Now the second theory. Let me adjust this just right. Theory number two, uh, you can call this the, sometimes I've heard people call this the Baptist theory. And it's called the Baptist theory because it's based on, um, it's based on the presence of a protein called beta amyloid or BA. Okay, so we have the Baptist theory. People believe this are called Baptists. All right, don't confuse this with Southern Baptists. It's a whole different kind of Baptist. Um, and it, what happens? The beta amyloid is actually a protein that is normally in the brain, and the theory is that it has something to do that is some kind of precursor to helping us build neurons in the brain. So, from the literature I've read, there is not we do not clearly understand the role of beta amyloid, but it does have something to do with neuron development. So, beta amyloid is basically happily in the brain and it usually does its thing with healthy brain cells but what happens is in a patient with um, Alzheimer's dementia here we have, I'm going to draw a little picture of a neuron here little dendrites sticking out and we've got a soma and we have an axon and maybe we have another one over here another happy little neuron and it's got an axon trailing off. And in between these neurons, we have little beta amyloids, little beta amyloid proteins. Now, like I said, these are usually healthy, but and uh, these are usually present in healthy brains. But what happens is people with Alzheimer's disease, for some reason, they start to get a whole bunch of these. They build up. And now this might be because uh, the body is um, is lacking an enzyme to break down the amyloid, or in some cases it's actually due to a um, mutation of the gene that creates beta amyloid itself. But when these um, collect in too great of a number, they start to form um, big depositions where they sort of bind together and bind with other chemicals and they create these plaques, and these are called beta amyloid plaques. Now, what happens now is up for debate. We know people with Alzheimer's disease have lots and lots of beta amyloid plaques, and people without Alzheimer's disease do not have lots of beta amyloid plaques. The theory is these beta amyloid plaques um, directly damage neurons and also cause lots of inflammation. So we have direct damage and we have inflammation. And these two things cause um, neurons to die and lead to brain atrophy. So that is the beta amyloid theory 
of Alzheimer's disease. Now, the next theory um, is called the Taoist theory, not to be confused with. So, people that believe the Taoist theory are, of course, Taoists. Don't confuse this with Taoists. But um, anyways, the people that the reason why it's called the Taoist theory is because there are um, proteins called tau proteins. Now, tau proteins are proteins that we have in our um, in all of our healthy cells throughout our body, particularly uh, lots of them in nerve cells. And the role of Taoist proteins are to set up the nice, happy little um, protein tubules that make that give our cells structure so they make up the cytoskeleton so again tau proteins are part of part of the healthy brain but what happens is for some reason whether there there's we're lacking the enzyme to break them down or whether we have a, a mutation in the enzymes that creates them something happens in the pa in patients that have alzheimer's disease where we get too many tau proteins they collect together and they form these little tangled structures inside the neurons and these are called neurofibrillary tangles and the neurofibrillary tangles are tangles inside the neurons and they're made up of tau proteins now the theory goes the Taoist theory goes that um, these neurofibrillary tangles uh, can directly damage and cause inflammation and also um, the remaining tau proteins since they've all sort of collected together and formed these plaques there's not the the tau, normal tau proteins aren't really uh, present to um, to create structure for the cell so you're gonna have loss of neuron cell structure and the neurons gonna die Okay. Now, which theory is correct? We don't know. It's probably um, it's probably uh, we will probably find that that both of these we, we may find that both of these are correlations. So what we found with the beta amyloid theory is that the number of beta amyloids plaques that are present in the patients that have Alzheimer's disease do not correlate. There's no correlation with the severity of symptoms. So this has made people question the beta amyloid theory. Now the Taoist theory um, has not really been disproven yet, um, but there are some other alternative theories that are constantly being proposed. Uh, so the jury is still out. So but again, there's three theories. There is the theory that starts with the um, decrease acetylcholine production in the cortex, and this has essentially been um, disproven prim primarily because of the lack of efficacy of uh, acetylcholinesterase inhibitor medications on preventing progression of the disease. Then there is the beta um, beta amyloid theory, um, and that um, that has to do with the deposition of uh, beta amyloid plaques within the brains and again there is a clear correlation uh, between people with people with Alzheimer's disease almost uh, and exclusively always have beta amyloid plaques however the number of plaques does not correlate to the severity of the symptoms and that makes people um, question whether this is really a, plays a central causal role in the development of Alzheimer's disease and then the third theory is the Taoist theory which relates to uh, tau proteins um, accumulating within the neuron and causing damage to the neurons okay now <clears throat> those are the th theories of what causes Alzheimer's disease. Now I want to talk about some things that we actually do know about the disease. We know that um, Alzheimer's disease is, uh, the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease is caused by the loss of neurons and the, um, and the overall atrophy of the brain. So this is a nice healthy brain. It's large and it here let me draw a little skull here and it kind of goes uses up all the space within the head it fills the entire vault the entire brain vault not a lot of space there 
However, with a patient with Alzheimer's disease, there is significant atrophy such that you can see um, lar a large space between the skull and the brain. So the subarachnoid space is huge in patients with advanced Alzheimer's disease. And notice here that the entire cortex shrinks. However, there is additional shrinkage in the hippocampus on both sides, but the entire cortex is affected. Now, the hippocampus is the place where we have our short-term memory. So this is one of the places that's affected quickest and most severely in Alzheimer's disease. But we also have other deficits like loss of, uh, we have the prefrontal cortex is affected and this causes um, decreased concentration. Um, we also have the um, language centers are affected, so we have decreased language. Um, we have emotional upset because the frontal lobes are affected. Um, and loss of total loss of cognitive ability. Okay, and the disease is progressive. The damage to the neurons and the loss of of um, cort cortical size continues. It progresses inexorably until death, and usually the disease will progress over a period of ten to twelve years. There is a form of uh, of Alzheimer's disease that is rare. Um, but very devastating. That is, uh, that's called um, early onset familial Alzheimer's disease, and this um, takes place in patients that are sometimes in their 30s and 40s. It tends to have strong familial clustering, and it is related, to, we believe, to genetic mutations. And this progresses very, very quickly within a period of a few years. Um, rather than the typical um, late onset sporadic Alzheimer's disease, which does not have a strong inherited component um, and it progresses much slower. It actually has an onset usually in the 60s and 70s and has a um, progression over 10 to 12 years. Okay, so that is a brief uh, overview of the of Alzheimer's disease.